I want to preserve and protect your dollars. Now he's wasting our taxpayer dollars on a security detail for a race that he's not going to win, period. What kind of Republican is that? What kind of good steward of taxpayers dollars is that? Uh, Unbelievable to me. Omar writes, your boy Kasich is an attention whore. The addiction is real. Yeah. Dale writes, why hasn't uh, Kasich followed suit with Cruz and quit? Shaking my head. Tracy writes, I don't like this toned down Donald Trump. Neither do I. He's all toned down and muted. I want the wild and crazy lion Ted. I'm going to miss that. Man, little Rubio, lion Ted. (laughs) I love it. I love it. But, you know, uh, I'll give Ted Cruz some props. He stayed in there. He took his best shot. He did. I mean, this was a long, drawn-out fight, okay? Every day, his wife was called into. He had to defend his wife. He had to uh, allegations of a relationship, a sexual relationship, extramarital relationship. He had to dodge that, okay? Shifting gears. They had no idea that Donald Trump was going to gain so much momentum. They had no idea, which means they don't really understand what the electorate is feeling. They don't know what Republicans want because they've been so focused on Obama. They have no idea whatsoever. And they don't have any good ideas at all. Uh, Jericho writes, yikes. Robin writes, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Robin. Good to see you. Good morning, Jared. Good to see you. (laughs) Dale writes, yes, indeed. RIP Queen Afini Shakur. Brent writes, I got to see this, LOL. <laughs> Pat writes, now you already knew the haters were going to come gonna come at you. Absolutely. But for something like that, something I'm posting, come on, man. Come on, miss me with that nonsense. Don't waste my time with something so trivial. So we wake up this morning. Today is Wednesday, May 4th, 2016. And it looks like the reality is setting in. Donald Trump. Right, Mr. Apprentice, you're fired. Uh, Alleged billionaire, Trump Towers. Okay, Miss USA pageant, all these different things. Birther. The Republican Party has just nominated a birther to lead uh, the party in the general election. Okay, hell, Ted Cruz is a birther. I don't recall about John Kasich. Uh, but but he's definitely an apologist. He's not a, bir- a birther, but he's 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 a dodger. Okay, he's dodging the fact that Ohio benefited from the Obama administration at the very least. He's a charlatan. <laughs> Do they have a chance? Could you see yourself voting for Donald Trump? All the smart people on cable are saying that the only way Donald Trump can win is if he gets more of the so-called white vote. Because he's already lost women and he's already lost minorities. So what is Donald Trump going to have to do to appeal to the white vote? Speaking of the white vote, are you concerned? Are you concerned that so many so-called hate groups are supporting Donald Trump? Like the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. They say Donald Trump is our man. They love his isolationist rhetoric. They love the fact he wants to build a wall. Break that down for me. Wait a minute. You and your family are struggling. Okay. Can't afford to get your children into the schools that they need to be productive and compete in 21st century. But the number one reason why you like Donald Trump is because he says he's going to build a wall. That's where we are. How does that really benefit anyone? How does that benefit you? Uh, good morning, Carolyn. Good to see you. Good morning, Brent. Good morning, Kashana. What's up, Kush? Hey, Rhonda. Good to see you. <laughs> Deanna says AB's on the Breakfast Club. I got to check that out later. Good morning, Wendy. Good morning, uh, Deborah. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Good to see everyone. Good morning, Pat. <laughs> good to see everyone. Dad is deep. Roosevelt writes, Brother Nate, I feel like the kid that's been playing with matches in a house is now on fire. I wanted Trump to stay in the primary for the entertainment. Now it appears as if this buster is for real and Dems may now be in turmoil. Maybe time to panic. I don't think so. Uh, The people that vote in the Republican primary, okay, 
are not necessarily uh, uh, emblematic of the people who will be voting in a general election. You're talking about Republican primary voters, hardcore of the hardcore. Uh, And all of the numbers that I've been reading suggest that Donald Trump's unfavorable numbers are through the roof. The only hope he has is to move toward the center, quite honestly, to capture some of that female vote. If he doesn't do that, what is he going to do to try to capture the so-called white vote? At this point, I don't think there's anything to be afraid of. I think that Bernie Sanders and or Hillary Clinton will thrash Donald Trump. As a matter of fact, the Hispanic vote, they're, they're suggesting that there are record numbers of early registrations. People are signing up. Hispanics don't want Donald Trump because he's talking about a wall. This might push people to register. This might push people to the polls. And I don't care what Tariq, Nasheed, Rashid, whatever. I don't care what they say. Okay. Sometimes you got to stop. You got to block a sucker. Just like checkers at chess, man. Sometimes you, your maneuver is to block. And that's what I think you're going to see. This is going to wake some people up. Some of the smart dumb cats are going to be like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. wait. Maybe I'll get registered just this one time to stop Donald Trump from being the president. Can you imagine that? I'm telling you, as a a member of the media, part of me, I'm loving the just pure entertainment value. I want the old Trump. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton slugging it out. Now that's entertainment right there. That's going to be good. Because, see, Hillary's not going to back down at all. Not one bit. And she's got her own problems. This email scandal, which I think is nothing nothing there whatsoever. But for some folks, they really think it is. Black folks are like, well, we can't trust her because she was using a personal email account. I know it sounds crazy, but I've heard it with my own ears. I've seen it with my own eyes. Number two, she's a Clinton. So she's got 20, 25 years of a record. For Republicans, for the electorate to just shift through and try to find something. You got this Benghazi nonsense, which I still don't believe is her fault whatsoever. But for some people, it's really taking hold on them. So you got two, you know, non-perfect candidates running. Again, we'll have to wait and see what happens with Bernie Sanders and John Kasich. Yo, asshole, man. If somebody got John Case's number, I will call him on the air. Come home. Kenny Kenny writes, that dude is a jive turkey sucker related to his Facebook post. People don't understand how weak they make themselves look. <laughs> they do. I mean, just ignore it. <laughs> That's what I do. I see things on Facebook that I'm like, well, I wouldn't post it. But it's not my Facebook page. Okay? There may be an audience for it. And clearly you can see there's folks out there that like Black Ink Crew. I mean, what should I be watching? Scandal? He must be a scandal watcher. No necessarily disrespect for any men out there watching Scandal, but ah, that's suspect to me. I'd much rather watch Black Ink Crew. <laughs> uh, Ms. D writes, good morning. Kasich must be vying for VP. Yeah, he might be. He might be. He might be. And he might be a good VP. If he doesn't damage himself uh, in the minds of Ohio voters because he could deliver potentially Ohio. He's the governor of Ohio. And I'm sure he'll put all of the tricks in play to try to deliver hit for his man. Brent writes, even the Republican Party is calling Trump the presumptive nominee. So what is it in Kasich? What is Kasich trying to prove by staying in a race with such a dismal delegate count? Does he have any delegates? I think he picked up some in Ohio, but that's it. The man has won one state. Oh, and that's the state in which, yes, your home state. And it's not even your home state. You're the current governor of the state, man. You going to call that success? (laughs) Uh, I like what Ms. D just said. Uh, Perhaps this is his audition for VP. That's all I can come up with. Uh, Tonika writes, good morning. What did I miss? You missed a lot, Tonika. Uh, Larry Wilmore went back to his show and he defended his N-word comments. I've got a clip from my good friends over at Inside Edition. They do great work. Make sure you check them out. And he says that basically that people are acting like he used the N-I-G-G-E-R word. He did not. 
He clearly says, I use N-I-G-G-A. There's a difference. To which his audience applauded. Yeah, good answer, good answer. The sucker no is a bad answer. Uh, my issue is not necessarily a black man using the N-word with another black man or whoever. Because people use that term all the time. It does mean something different. He says it's a term of endearment. Well, I mean, I guess the term of endearment is in the ears or the eyes of the beholder. And the word from the Obama administration is that Obama took it that way, like it was a term of endearment. My thing is, with the complicated, color-coded racial politics, why don't you leave the street vernacular in the streets? I don't see Larry Wilmore behind the scenes using the N-word. What's up, my N-word? I don't see that. I'm sorry. I don't see him doing that. Is he a prolific, away-from-the-job N-word user? Speaking of Larry Wilmore, uh, he might be. I don't see it, though. But I've got the clip for you. I'll play it for you out of the break. My name is Nathan Ivey. You're listening to The Nathan Ivey Show. Did you know that birthday parties help build confidence in kids? Yeah. Did you know that giving kids less sugar before bedtime helps them sleep better? Oh, totally. Did you know that friendly kids have more friends? Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? I didn't know that. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. This is the news. This morning, we are saluting the 2.2 million women who have joined in the war effort. They now make up 37% of the workforce, changing their role forever. The prestigious Harvard Medical School is breaking ground today, opening its doors to new female applicants. Today, little girls all over the world look to the sky, where the first woman is now in space. Military stereotypes are challenged today with the trailblazing promotion of a U.S. female officer to four-star general. It was just announced that the vast majority of last year's doctorate degrees were earned by women. We've come so far, but our news is changing for the worse. More women die from heart disease and stroke than men, even though it can be prevented. Make a change at GoRedForWomen.org today. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women. Comedian Larry Wilmore is defending his use of the N-word in front of President Obama. Yo, Barry, you did it, my he spoke out last night on his Comedy Central show. I completely understand why people would be upset about that. It's a very charged word. I get it. He also responded directly to Piers Morgan's column in the Daily Mail in which he calls the N-word the vile word that will not die. Are you saying I called the president a n Okay, that's horrible. I would never do that. Um, I believe I said, yo, Barry, you did it, my n there's a difference. <laughs> Piers, you did not properly conjugate that slur. Okay? Very important. Very important. Sure <laughs> is what white people use to denigrate, demean, and dehumanize black people. And <laughs> is a term of endearment some black people use between each other to take back that power. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest says the president was not offended. I'm confident that uh, Mr. Wilmore used the word by design, but I, I think any reading of his comments makes clear he was not using the president as the butt of a joke. Stephen Colbert is standing behind Wilmore. Personally, I thought Larry gave a great speech that did not let the president or the press off the hook, and I am confident that Larry will receive the ultimate recognition for his work, never being invited back. <laughs> Well, you should never be invited back. But this is an age-old debate that we've had many times, my friends. Good morning, currently 7.44 a.m. in the Queen City. Welcome back to the Nathan Ivey Show, your morning destination for interesting conversation. Shout out to my friends over Soul Public Radio. You can find a link at my website, NathanIvey.com. On that website, a podcast will be made available immediately following the end of the show. Tell a friend about the show. Larry Wilmore says that he didn't, <laughs> that Piers Morgan, where has he been? Who gives a damn about a Piers Mor- Morgan? Sucker, please. He said, you, you didn't properly conjugate 
your slur, which is hilarious. Some folks don't like that. They're like, there's no difference, Nate, between N-I-G-G-E-R and N-I-G-G-E-R.